right in the middle. Go ahead. You can just walk it over or pass it over. Billy, could you pass that over? Aaron, can you describe what it was like to walk into this spring training as manager of the New York Yankees, and what do you view as your biggest challenge this spring? Ooh. It was a bit surreal, but I've had a lot of those moments. I think the last couple of months as we've started to pre prepare for this season, um, it was special walking down the hall, walking into uh, the clubhouse, into my office, walking down to the dugout for the first time, kind of getting a lay of the land and feeling the facilities a little bit and, you know, understanding that, you know, now is the time. Um, and the excitement that goes with that because of the group of guys that we've assembled. So um, as far as the biggest challenge, you know, look, in spring training, it's about just getting these guys as individuals ready to play. And, you know, I think that's a little bit different for for each guy. You know, um, you know, we obviously we do things in a team concept and team building things, but I really view spring training as we need to get individuals ready to where they're performing at their best when we're breaking camp at the end of next month. And um, that looks a little bit different for everybody, depending on where guys are physically, where guys are maybe coming off an injury. Um, but I think that's the biggest challenge is really tapping into each guy and, and having them steering the right way when we leave here at the end of next month. Okay, we have wireless mics on both sides of the room. Who else has questions? Jack, to your right. Aaron, as you embark on this next part of your career, whose voice or voices are in your head and, and what pieces of advice are in your head yeah. about making sure this is successful? Yeah, I think, my, first of all, my dad, you know, he's been the biggest influence in my life, certainly my baseball life. Um, uh, you know, as as most of you guys have known, I've I've talked to a few different managers, you know, frequently um, um, that I've kind of picked their brains. You know, I, I, one of the things I remember when I first got traded to the Yankees was walking into Joe Torre's office and and just his presence, his kind of soothing nature, um, his ability to put me at ease at the time and what's a whirlwind experience when you get traded as a player especially coming to a place like new york um so so hopefully um i take a little piece of 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 what i thought he was great at into this job who else sweeney front row aaron uh, first time managers always talk about how different it is managing a pitching staff you've got a veteran pitching coach how much are you leaning on Larry Rothschild to kind of guide you through how much responsibility do you just give him uh, how much authority do you just give him to do it a lot um, you know when I when I interviewed for this job one of the things I was aware of was that Larry Rothschild was one of the guys already on coming back no matter what which frankly put me at ease a little bit because of the respect I have for him because of what I know he is and now getting the opportunity just to get to work with him you know we spent a couple days down here about a month ago as a staff just kind of getting to know each other getting our program up and running making sure we're buttoned up as we get down here um you know he's already been in my office a couple times today and and I frankly do a lot of listening because I want to hear what he has to say he he He's so passionate. He's so good at what he does. Um, and he's so organized in, in really having an action plan for each one of these guys. And uh, so I'm leaning on him a ton. And, and I'm sure, especially in the early days, we'll lean on him even more. And, and I really respect his ep expertise and his ability to, you know, find strengths and weaknesses with guys and then be able to tap into those things. So um, I'm really excited that he's here and i'm even more excited the last couple of days just a few of the conversations we've started to have already as guys start to trickle in and we start to lay out the plans for each guy to your left brendan and brendan if you can pass it back to hokey when you're done um it's been a lot of talk about how in-game decision making will be one of the biggest hurdles you'll have to cross as a young manager mm -hmm. is there any way you can start preparing for that now have you started working on that can you work on that now well 
Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think the more the more prepared, the more you know your guys, the more you know your strengths and weaknesses of guys, all that goes into, you know, what comes out in the game, right? So I'm going to prepare. We're going to be buttoned up each and every, you know, each and every night uh, about kind of having a game plan, an action plan, how we want things to play out. Um, and then hopefully the instincts – um, that you have as a person, as a guy in control of the game, um, hopefully those come out in, in a positive way. But that all that prep that goes in allows you, puts you in that position. And, uh, and that's already started not only being here, but the last couple of months with getting to know the organization, getting to know each individual strengths and weaknesses, what's, what we have, what we expect out of them, what we think their role may be. Those all go into, I think, properly preparing you to to make quality decisions within the course of a game brian aaron yeah. expectations are obviously high for this team Dylan batanza said uh if you guys don't win the world series it's not going to be a great year what would constitute a, a great year for you well he's right about the world series would be a great year um we understand the expectations and i think one of the things that's exciting for me is to hear some of those comments and to to be around these guys as they've trickled in the last few days as i've trickled in like last year was great a lot of these guys came of age and had a lot of I, I think viewed it as a very successful season but i think what stands out being in that room right now is each each really each each guy i've spoken to the hunger is there and there's no satisfaction with what they're able to accomplish so we understand it's a very tough road and, and that'll be one of our messages especially for young players that have had successes you know just because things look good right now or things look good on paper and we believe we have a great team it's also really hard and there's a lot of little things that can allow you to be a championship club and those are the things we really want to dive into especially starting here in spring training but from what i can tell the hunger in these guys is real uh tyler front row here <clears throat> how would you size up the uh, second base and third base situation and what do you hope to see from those positions do you have a Fluid. Um, you know, we've got several guys now in camp. We've we've got a couple veteran guys that um, are, are part of the mix. Obviously, guys like Glaber Torres and Tyler Wade and and Miguel Andujar are all real opportunities that are are right in front of them. You know, as as they're kind of knocking on the door as that next wave of guys. We think whether it's immediately or certainly down the road. Um, guys that we we feel really good that are going to impact our major league club for a long time. Um, right now, it's it's I don't know if open competition is the right word. Maybe it is, um, but there's opportunities for a lot of guys to to stake claim on a couple of really important jobs. To your right, uh, Dave. Aaron, uh, over here. Mm -hmm. Spring training is a time when we traditionally ask a lot of the players you know, what they have to prove or, you know, a job they're trying to win. I mean, is it fair to say that you might be the guy in camp that has the most to prove of anyone in a Yankee uniform based on this experience? Okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I understand where we are. Um, it's the New York Yankees. Um, you know, obviously, having never done this before, I understand a lot of the questions. A lot of people can't wait to see what my style is or how I'm going to go about things or how I'm going to command the team and whatnot. So maybe it's one of the more interesting to see how that kind of unfolds. Um, but it's something that um, I'm, I'm consumed with with the job and being great at it and and just hopefully impacting our guys that allow us to take another step as a club and, and ultimately become a championship club. All the way in the back to your left, Kenny. Aaron, uh, just wanted to know how much contact have you had with the players even before camp open? A lot. Um, I would say there's very few guys I haven't at least touched base with uh, from a text message spoken to a number of them um you know so i'm I, I feel like we're in a good place and and at least off to a pretty good start um 
And one of the things that I've been doing these last couple of months, one of the things that was really important to me was to start that clock on those on those relationships. And I feel like we're off to a really good start. I feel like we're in a really good place. And, uh, you know, I think one of the things that makes me so excited about this job, not only the talent and what I believe this team's capable on the field, but just a lot of high character, good people in that room. And that's, I think that's come across um, watching this team from afar the last couple of years, but certainly getting to know them a little bit now this winter through phone calls, through uh, dinners, through golf, through, you know, just meetings at a hotel, through phone calls, text messages. Um, you know, I'm really excited about the people that I'm going to get to go down this road with. Mm -hmm. Back to the front middle. Aaron, um, just with Stan and Judge, how do you kind of plan to manage them in terms of uh, playing, you know, outfield, DH, and then how is uh, Judge's shoulder, you know, after the surgery and all that, kind right. of incorporating him back in? Yeah, he, he's he's doing well. Um, you know, we'll, you know, we talk about, you know, managing individuals and getting individuals ready, and and we'll certainly be as cautious as we need to be in the early days. Um, but I think the one thing that's exciting about both of those guys is we've got two obviously an mvp a rookie of the year guys that are tremendous players um both guys are really good defenders as well and both guys when i answer that last question I'm talking about quality individuals that you can tell that it's about winning for them it's about trying to chase down that championship for them and with that come some some sacrifice and and so far i think there's a lot of buy-in from from those guys about you know being in some different spots in 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 different scenarios um but th they'll both be very much a part of the process and um it'll be something that kind of is not set in stone right now and is something that will unfold now over the next five or six weeks about what you know what are the final roles that we view for them same spot, Harp. Aaron, you mentioned style. Uh, obviously, spring training isn't regular season, but is there a way to establish your style in terms of even intensity the way, intensity the way you uh, want guys to go about their business and drills, things like that, and how will you go about doing that? I, I think there is. Um, you know, I expect us to have an energy and a pace to the way we practice. You know, one of our kind of mantras is we want to practice at a championship pace so we want to be out on the field with energy um moving quickly practicing as much as we can at game speed um and i think one of the things that i really want to impart on these guys and that they already do really well in my view is have fun playing the game i mean i think that's what's one of the things that's really helped connect this team I think at a even a, another level than we've seen in recent years is the connection that they've now developed with the fan base. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with how much fun this team has playing the game of baseball. Because at the end of the day, it is a kid's game. And I think what leaps off the screen with this club is the fun that they're having playing baseball together. And that's something that I want them to never lose to continue to have that fun, but understand we're going out there with an, an intensity and an expectation of greatness. Uh, all the way to your right, Aaron. Joel, standing up. Uh, Aaron, obviously you're, so, you're the son of someone who managed, and I'm, I assume you've thought a lot about managing, but in these last few months since you've got the job, has anything fallen onto your table where you were like, hmm, I wasn't expecting that one, and you could only know it because you are actually a major league manager now. Yeah, I don't think I've been blindsided, frankly, to this point. And and I say that out of out of reverence and respect for the for the position. Like I understand there's gonna be things that happen in the course of a season or, you know, in the middle of the night, um, that I probably haven't accounted for yet. Um, but I I would say to this point, um, you know, I feel like I've jumped right into the organization and um it's an organization on such solid ground from 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 ownership to the front office 
um, to the player development and research and um, and and that's what's something that's come across to me like the the stability of this organization